Plan to nap is a smart and efficient way to build software. Let's say we're a very successful company that needs to automate the process of creating and sending quotes to customers. Starting with a list of customers and a quote template, we can provide a few details and then send quotes via email as PDFs. This is an application we can build in 10 to 15 minutes. Let me show you how. First, starting in Planting App Configuration, I'm going to navigate to Entities and create a new entity. We need a space to store our clients and quotes. So I'm going to create an entity called Client. And I need to specify a plural version of clients. And then click Continue. And I'm going to add some properties for our client. We're going to get their name, email, phone, their company. And then finally, we're going to ask them for their preferred currency, how they would like to receive their uh, quotes, the currency in which they'd like to receive them. So um, I'm going to keep all these as, as text, except for email, I'm going to select the um, email type. And what this is going to do is provide some uh, validation on the front end. So we make sure we get correct email addresses. And I'm going to do the same thing for phone. And then I need to specify a display name. So I'm going to choose the client's name. This is how they'll appear in the system. And I'll click Save in the upper right corner. And so now I need to create an entity for the quotes. So I'm going to click on New. And we will call this one quote, of course. And once again, I need to specify a plural version, quotes. And then for quotes, we're going to get a title of the quote. We're going to uh, get a description and the client that the quote is going to go to, and an amount of the quote. Now here, I'm going to make a few more changes as property types. I'll keep text for title, but for description, I'm going to choose large text so we can store more data there. For client, I'm not going to choose a primitive uh, property type, but I'm going to go to entities, and I'm going to select the entity that we just created, client. So this is how we'll connect the quote to the client. And then for amount, of course, I'm going to choose money because amount is going to be a, a dollar amount that the uh, quote's going to be. So, and then we need to store display, choose a display name, and I'm going to choose the quote title as the display name. So we'll go up to the upper right corner and click save. And now, um, believe it or not, we have the basics of our application created. Uh, so let me show you that. In the upper left corner, I'm going to go and preview the application. So this is the home page of our application. And you can see that we have um, a, two menu items here, one for clients and one for quotes. I'm going to select clients and we'll add a new client to the system. So let's call him John Williams. And uh, for his email address, I'm going to uh, choose a, a special training address that I have so that we, we can go check the uh, box, check the email that he gets when we get completed here. So I'll put in that email address there for the phone number. And then for his company, um, we're going to call his company Williams Electric. And then for his currency, I'm going to say that he wants to receive his uh, quotes in euros. So I'm going to just type the uh, EUR here and we'll click add. Now we have a client in the system. So let's put a quote in for him. So I'm going to navigate to the quotes tab at the top and we'll say new. And uh, let's say we're building a new website for, for Williams Electric. So I'm just going to type the uh, new website. And for a description, uh, we'll put in some text that I have on my clipboard already. And then uh, when I click client, notice I have a drop down. So if I had multiple clients, I could choose from any of those clients, but we have John Williams in the system right now. So I'll select him. And let's say we're going to make his quote for a thousand US dollars. US dollars, notice that he, his uh, preferred currency is euros. So we'll get to that conversion in a bit. So I'll add that quote to the system. And so now we have this, uh, this quote here already, but John Williams hasn't received his quote yet. So we need to send it to him. Um, so I'm going to add a button here to send a quote to him. But first, we're going to create a workflow that's going to do some logic on the back end. So to do that, I'm going to navigate back to Planting App Configuration, and we'll go to Workflows, and I'll create a workflow. So click New up here, and 
the first thing we're going to do is specify an input value for the workflow. So a little bit of data for the workflow to work with. And we're going to pass in the quote ID. So I'm going to call that quote, click on add parameter, and as the input type, I'm going to choose our entity quote. And what this will allow us to do is that when we pass in that ID, we can access all the data for the specified quote. So now let's go to process. And the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to find our client and get our, uh, our client data. So I'm typing read client, and this uh, is an action that was created automatically when we created our client entity. And um, to pass in the uh, client ID, all I have to do is type quote client. So remember, we have our client and quote uh, entities connected. So I'm accessing the quote data and getting the client ID from that quote. And we're going to output that into a uh, client. And this will allow us to access all our client data uh, while we're going through the workflow. So let me save that. And now I'm going to add an action. And here we want to uh, start uh, processing the the uh, the conversion, the rate conversion from US dollars to euros. So um, I'm going to uh, do a server action, a server request. We're going to choose that. And uh, there's a sample uh, URL in here, but we actually are going to um, paste in a uh, an API that I have prepared already, it's freecurrencyapi.net. And what this allows us to do is uh, get exchange rates, current exchange rates. So um, scrolling down here, I need to choose an input method. I'm gonna choose Git. Here's some sample uh, data that's uh, automatically included, but I'm just gonna delete that because all we need to do is just, we're going to um, just get the, rate the, the current exchange rates. And so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to output this into um, a token called rates JSON. So our uh, um, API is returning JSON back to us. So I'm just gonna call the token rates JSON. And that's all I need to do here. So let's save that. And now I'm going to take my response from the server and I'm gonna do a little bit of processing on it. So I'm gonna just type execute here and choose the execute JavaScript server side action. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of JavaScript here. Um, we could do this with completely without code, but I just want to show you an example of doing it with a little bit of code. So uh, first I need to add a couple variables, put them in as strings. One's going to be the amount, and we're going to get the amount by um, uh, accessing the quote uh, data. So I'm going to type quote and uh, colon, and we're going to access the amount of the quote. So that's how we're going to get the, the amount. And then here, we're going to uh, get the, uh, the client's cur preferred currency. So I'm gonna just call that C currency to say, say that's uh, um, the client currency. And we're going to access that by um, accessing the client data that we have uh, in our workflow. And we're going to get their currency. Okay, and then here, let me paste in the little bit of JavaScript I have prepared already. There it is. Uh, all we're doing here is just uh, taking that uh, JSON that we're getting back from the free currency API, and it's sending us a, a list of exchange rates. And we're saying that we want the exchange rate that matches the client's preferred currency, which in this case is going to be euros. And we're multiplying that by the amount, the US dollar amount of their uh, um, quote. We're going to output that into a, um, a token that I'm just making up here. We're gonna call it a, um, C amount, which is the converted amount. And we'll save this like that. And now we need to prepare the PDF that we're going to attach to the email. So I'm going to type PDF here and we'll choose generate PDF. And I'm going to change the input type to code mirror. There's a couple options there. And I'm going to paste in my pre-prepared uh, template that I have. There it is right there. So we have uh, some HTML that I've prepared already uh, with a little bit of styling in there. But I just want to highlight the fact that we have the tokens in here. So we're going to pass in a client name. Uh, we're going to pass in a quote ID, 
uh, the client company, client name, and um, also the uh, as the sales representative, I'm going on the assumption the logged in person sending the quote is the sales representative. So we're going to just say uh, that the user, the logged in user's first name and last name is being sent as the representative, and uh, the quote description. And uh, the here's an important thing. So this is that this is that converted amount. So it's being converted, and here we're showing. The, uh, the preferred currency that the client has. So we're saying that this is the converted amount in the client's uh, preferred currency. And then once again, down here at the bottom, the sales representative is the logged in user. So we're using the logged in user's first name, last name, and email address. Okay. And then down here, let's see, for the PDF, I want to give kind of a meaningful name to the PDF. And so I'm going to uh, say that we're going to call it quote hyphen, and we're going to put the client's company name in there and the title of the quote. We need to specify a destination where the, uh, the PDF is going to be saved. I'm just going to choose this, uh, uh, the site's uh, home, home uh, folder. And then we need to specify a way to access that file so we can attach it to the email. So here I'm going to type URL, and that's going to be the token that we're going to use when we attach this uh, PDF to an email. So I'll click save here. And then I want to add and send email action. So I type send, and we have send email. And uh, we're going to send it to the client. So I'm going to put in the, the client email token. And we want to put in the subject. I'm going to use that same text I used to name the PDF. So the, the subject of the email will also have the client company and the quote title in it. And uh, for the body of the email, I have some, uh, uh, a, a little template prepared already. So if we look at that, it just is saying, hi, client, you find your quote attached. And uh, then it's signed with the, uh, the logged in user's first name, last name, and user email. And then we need the most important part of this is to attach the um, quote to the email. So um, I have uh, here where I'm going to put in that, that uh, token we just spoke about. And so that's URL. So this will attach the PDF to the email. Save that. And then now all we need to do is just put an end event on the workflow and our workflow is in place. So I'll click save and test in the upper right corner and we'll call it send quote to client and save it. So now I'm gonna test it. I know that I have a, a quote in the system and its ID is one. So I'm gonna click run here and worked well. So that's good. So now what we want to do is add that button to the uh, grid that I was talking about earlier. So I'll go back here and click on the cog in the lower right corner, click listing, and we'll scroll down to item buttons. This is a button that'll appear on the row for each item. I'll click add item button and we'll call it uh, send quote. We'll choose a primary button type and I want to add an action. And uh, the first thing I want to do is, um, is I'm going to type send quote, and I'm going to choose execute send quote to client. That's the uh, workflow that we just created. And all I need to do is just pass in the ID of the quote. And that's on, you know, for each row, there's a, a quote ID. So I'm just passing that into the workflow. And now here, I'm just going to give a little bit of feedback to the user. So I'm going to put up a toast message saying that everything went well. So we'll just uh, go down here um, and I'll say that uh, just simply email sent. And we'll uh, make sure that's a, a, a color that indicates success. And uh, we'll allow the user to close the toast message. And it's uh, by default posted for one second. I'm gonna post it for five seconds and we are going to place it in the middle center of the page. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and save all my settings here and we'll refresh the page. And you can see now we have a send quote button. So I'll click the send quote button and I get that message indicating that the email has been sent and close that. And now I'm going to navigate over to the, uh, the, the client's email and we're just gonna do a little bit of a refresh here. And you can see that we have a new email here 
And uh, so this first one here is from when I tested the workflow. And this second one down here is from when I tested the, the send quote button on the grid. And you can see that uh, my um, uh, tokens are being replaced correctly. And if I take a look at the PDF, you can see my tokens in the PDF are replaced correctly. And most importantly, that 1,000 US dollars has been correctly converted to 885 euros. So we have a fully functional application now, but there's so much more we can do, such as creating more data structure in the system, of course. Uh, we can add more, we can add approval flows and other business logic, and we can expose APIs in the system. And there's so much more that we can do. The possibilities are really endless. Thank you for watching.